Welcome everyone. Here we are at week four. This is right at midterm right now. Uh, welcome and I hope you're having a good Monday. Our topic for this week is cellular respiration and photosynthesis. So last week you learned about classification of organisms and how they're classified into three domains. That, that's the main thing that you should have gotten out of last week's classification of organisms, that there are three domains, and two of the domains include bacteria, and the third one includes everything else that's living on the planet, the domain eukarya. And so that tells us that bacteria are a really important part of life on the planet, and that they are very different from eukaryotic organisms like us. You learned about different types of cells, like prokaryotic cells versus eukaryotic. Prokaryotic just means bacterial. So bacterial cells versus cells like ours and plants and fungi and the protists. And you also learned something about cell structures. You had to because you talked about antibiotic resistance. And antibiotics are medicines that are used to treat bacterial infections in us. So the antibiotics kill the bacteria, but they don't kill us. That has to do with cell structures. So hopefully you did well on that. Uh, for this week, what's going on this week? Well, I want you to at least skim through the chapters 6, 7, and 8 in your textbook, in that Open Stacks Biology 2nd Edition textbook. Skim through them first so you find out where everything is. You will be going back to those, I promise. Read the Module 4 overview and watch the videos, especially the video on the acidification of the ocean because that is going to help you in your discussion board posts. Okay, so that's the reason that we have videos in there. Uh, for your discussion board postings this week, remember that your initial post is due by Thursday and your response posts are due by Sunday. So the first question that you have with this discussion board postings is, are photosynthesis and cellular respiration processes opposite or complementary or both? Now you've got to realize something. When somebody asks you a question like this, the most likely answer is both. Otherwise, why would they ask you that? They would just say, are they opposite or complementary, right? So the answer must be both. Well, why would it be both? Hmm, let's think about that. Let's just back up and think about these processes because you probably heard of them before. But let's think about them in really general terms. So what the heck is photosynthesis? You take sun energy and you take carbon dioxide and at the end of photosynthesis, you make glucose. Okay, and glucose is food. It's a simple sugar. What happens in cellular respiration? You take glucose and you break it down, break it down, break it down in the presence of oxygen. And you make ATP molecules. And what do you release as waste products? Carbon dioxide. Hmm. They sound like opposite reactions because you start with CO2 with one, end up with glucose, and the other one you start with glucose and end up with CO2. Okay? Or could they be complementary? Now, one hint about this is that all the organisms that do photosynthesis also do cellular respiration. So there must be a reason for this. Why in the world do you make glucose and then you break it down? So you're going to look at that. All right, another question that you're going to answer is, are the autotrophs the foundation of all ecosystems? Well, what the heck's an autotroph? Auto means self and troph means feeding. So the self feeders are the ones that do photosynthesis. Are the photosynthesizing organisms the foundation of all ecosystems? That's something for you to figure out and especially think about because they are very important. Just think about the Amazonian rainforest right now. What are they doing? They're cutting down all of the vegetation to make way for farmland. They're cutting down all the organisms that do photosynthesis. And of course, they are also killing or running off all of the other the heterotrophs um, that are located in the uh, rainforest. So are photosynthesizers the foundation of all ecosystems? And then in your response post, you're going to be delving into the release of 
extra carbon dioxide, excessive amounts of carbon dioxide, and the release and its consequences to the atmosphere, to the ocean, etc. Okay, if you're environmental science majors, you most likely know the answer to this already. Okay, and then you have a journal entry. And what you're supposed to be doing is comparing aerobic versus anaerobic respiration. Aerobic, in the presence of oxygen. Anaerobic, without the use of oxygen. So if you're talking about anaerobic processes, you mean fermentation or anaerobic respiration. They're actually different, um, but they're also similar because they do not use oxygen to make ATP molecules. Aerobic respiration does require oxygen, but you make a whole lot more ATP molecules from a single glucose. So you're going to be discussing those and you're going to need to go back to those chapters that I mentioned for this information. You're going to talk about how ancient glycolysis must be. So glycolysis is the first chemical pathway, which just means a series of chemical reactions that happen in aerobic respiration, fermentation, and anaerobic respiration. It's basically just breaking the glucose molecule into two, into two pyruvate molecules. You'll also discuss ethanol being used as a biofuel, and biofuel just means a fuel produced by organisms, right? So you're going to be discussing that. So you've got discussion board post, you've got a journal entry, and you also have milestone two for your final project. Here is an outline of what you need to include in this milestone two. If you'll notice in the directions for this under the guidelines and rubric for milestone two, you're supposed to make an outline. So you don't have to write out everything. You need to put things in bullet form but you have to put enough detail well where I know that you know what is going to be put into this section, okay? So this is section three, but it's milestone two. I know that's a little bit confusing, but it's section three of your final project, the biological processes. So level of organization. At what level of organization does your topic impact living things? So does it impact just a particular species on the planet? Does it affect the entire biosphere, which means every part of the earth that has anything living in it from the depths of the ocean to uh, great heights in the atmosphere? Um, does it involve just a particular ecosystem? So what level of organization is impacted by your topic? Analysis. You're going to talk about three biological concepts or processes that pertain to your topic. So if you're talking about global warming, just, just imagine that for a second. Most of you are not doing that, but and you know a lot about that anyway. Uh, if you're talking about global warming and climate change, what are some biological concepts that have to do with global warming? Well, the carbon cycle, for one, terribly important. Photosynthesis, because photosynthesizers grab that CO2 out of the oxygen that we're pumping out there because of the burning of fossil fuels. Um, even something like pH and how important a neutral pH is to the health of the planet because of this, the acidification of oceans. Um, and that's the water cycle, that's part of the water cycle. So anyway, um, there are lots of different concepts, biological concepts and processes that you should be able to come up with you just need to find three of these and you will be discussing them. The relationship to the topic. So now you're going to talk about how those three biological processes relate to your particular topic. Okay, you're just describing them in B in the analysis and then you're relating them to your topic in C. And in section D, you're going to select one of them and illustrate how the characteristics of life, like metabolism, for example, are affected by your concept or process. Or, uh, I don't know, I can't think of another example right off the top of my head. But you remember those characteristics of life, the seven that we had listed, or was it eight? Anyway, um, the ones that we had listed, response to stimuli, a reproduction, etc. You know, all those characteristics. How 
does one of your processes affect characteristics of life and the impact of health? So is there a positive or negative impact on all the species, on us, on the environmental health? Oh, that's going to be important for you. And also give some examples of this. You will also include resources that you have researched. So don't forget that. So you're going to have a little reference page for this. And be sure to cite your um, resources in your writing if you have gotten the information from them. Okay? There's a lot this week. You've got three different things that are due. And as always, if you have any questions, please just email me. m.segment at snhu.edu. On a personal note, if you have made it this far, I just got my vaccine today. And the reason I am not old enough to get the old people vaccine, I'm just saying. So I have been part of the vaccine trial, the Pfizer vaccine trial since, hmm, since the summer. Um, and I found out on Friday that I was given the placebo during the vaccine trial. So they called me back in and they said, okay, now we're switching over everybody who was given the placebo to the vaccine. So I got my vaccine today and three re weeks from today, I'll get my second vaccine. I'll tell you how it's going. So far, I feel perfectly fine. And, you know, they take blood from me to check for antibodies. They do COVID tests almost every time I go in. It's been a very interesting experience, um, but I hope to help the nation and the world try to figure out if these vaccines, in particular, the Pfizer vaccine, is effective and safe. And <laughs> so far, it's been safe. So just saying. I hope you have a wonderful week, and like I said, if you need anything, just give me a shout via email, and take care.